All right, chapter 19, thermodynamics. We've talked a little bit about thermodynamics, and, you know, the word might sound large or intimidating, but um, it's essentially this sort of business here, where we're calculating and quantifying the, the energy flow of um, react in re during reactions, whether it be heat flowing out of the reaction or um, a pressure change, which is work done by a reaction, right? Do you remember that a little bit? Um... Well, what do you mean? I know how to do this problem here. You remember this? How to do this problem? Yeah, you just take the the products minus the reactants, the sum of them. That's right. So if I took the negative six ninety eight point seven, that's the delta H of uh, formation. There it is, the delta H of formation for this chemical. Or in other words, that's a way of of saying what? What do you mean? Well, when we're talking about a delta H of formation or a a formation reaction, it's delta H, that's the delta H formation. Let's think of this chemical H2CO3, carbonic acid, right? What would the delta H of formation be for H2CO3? Um, you mean you form it from its elements? Is that what you're talking about? That's right. We take it, its elements, hydrogen gas, carbon, oxygen gas, right? This is how oxygen exists, so too, that's how hydrogen exists in nature. That's how car that's one of the allotropes of carbon, at least. So, that's what our initial chemicals would be, the minimal amount of bonds, right? Because energy associated with chemicals is the energy that's in their bonds, right? So, when we bring these elements together and new bonds begin to form, then there is a change in energy, and the delta H associated with this reaction as long as we're only forming one mole of that material, would be the delta H of formation for this chemical, carbonic acid. Now, um, I have to make sure this is balanced here, and it looks pretty good, except for I just looks like I need um, uh, one and a half of these, so I'm going to put three halves O2 in front of that, but other than that, this is balanced. And remember in uh, uh, delta H of formations, how sometimes... Oh, you have... Fractions, you mean? Yeah, that's right, because we're only trying to make one mole of the material. So the delta H for this chemical reaction, do you know what it is? Uh, it's this negative 698.7, right? That's right, negative 690, whoops, 98.7. That's this value here. That's what we've been provided. So essentially we're saying that is how much energy you would get if you took elements, combined them together to form one mole of this compound. And that's these energies for all of these. In the, a chemical reaction like this, these bonds are being disrupted and these bonds are being formed. So you can simply look at the delta H of formation for all of these, take the products minus the sum of the reactants, and that will be the resulting delta H for this reaction. Now, these are in units of kilojoules per mole of material, so the resulting delta H for this reaction is kilojoules per mole, all right? This is not a delta H of formation reaction, so we wouldn't call it a delta H of form. This is not a delta H of formation, right? Right. So this last one, how would we do it? Uh, negative 315.4, that's products, minus the sum of negative 46.19 and negative 92.3. That's right, very good. And you can try that on your calculator. So that's kind of some a reminder. Now here's an example that we're going to work through a variety of times using lots of different values and learning more about our um, thermodynamic parameters that we want to be aware of. So I'll let you do this one. Why don't you guys push pause? Um, in this one, there is a number here, right? A coefficient other than one. So when we go down here to the delta H of formation for HCl, what do we got to do? you got to multiply that by two. That's right, because this is per mole of material, and we have two moles there. So you can look at the delta H's of these, sum them up, subtract the delta H's for these, and this one times two again, and let's see if you can get an answer there. Okay, so push pause, do it on your calculator, make sure you're able to, to get an answer. Okay, I'm trusting you. All right, so uh, let's see, what'd you get? Oh, I got the negative 97.3. All right, and that's in kilojoules, right? So these are our, our kilojoules. We'll bring that up, be, keep reminding ourselves of the units because we see this is provided in kilojoules. This is a delta G. We haven't really talked about that much. And this is S. We haven't talked about that. These are other thermodynamic parameters that we're going to begin to introduce. 
This is in kilojoules, but this is in joules. All right, so the first law of thermodynamics, and this is another uh, portion of our kind of review here, is that the sum of the energy is the energy final minus initial. Now, when you, when you have a chemical material in front of you, you don't have a way to really identify how much energy is stored in those bonds simply by looking at the chemical, but we can perform a chemical reaction and then we can look at uh, the change in energy of that chemical reaction and then the final minus initial will be our, our change in energy or change in whatever the parameter is. Now, the change in energy total equals zero. What does that mean? Well, it's because when you're talking about the energy of your um, of everything, right, the system and the surroundings, the energy is not neither created or destroyed, and that's our first law of thermodynamics. Okay, energy can be transmitted from a reaction to the surroundings in a couple of ways. Do these look familiar? Oh uh, yeah, heat and work, right? That's right, heat and work. Heat is in the form of a change in temperature and work, and you can think about that as the, the molecular motion. That's what our temperature is, right? Yeah. And then work is a, a, not a molecular, but a macroscopic motion, right? Or uh, an expansion of gases. So energy is equal to work times change, or times the, the heat. Now let's talk a little bit about the work. Remember how we would identify the work, the energy that has been done because of the by the work or by the reaction doing work by comparing the moles of gas of the products and the moles of gas of the reactants. If there's more moles of gas as products, you subtract how many moles of gas you started with, right? Seven, subtract six. That means one mole of gas is created. That means at the given temperature, uh -huh, right, we can predict change in moles, one times R, our constant, to get um, the units to work out, times the temperature, all right, per, per joules per mole Kelvin, 8.314 are the units there. So, PV, NRT, is where we derive this from, therefore, work is equal to delta NRT, right? our change in volume, that is our, our work. Okay, because um, this is at constant pressure. All right, so we can actually identify how much energy is done according because of work. Uh, enthalpy is our H, right? Internal energy is our E, and again, E is work and heat. Now heat, Q, that's also our delta H here. So when we talk about enthalpy, that's one component of the work, but, or, or the energy, but the other is the what? Well, there's the heat and then the work. That's right, and that's what we're seeing here again. Um, if there's no change in the mole of gas, then delta E is equal to, the change in energy is equal to the only the uh, heat, right? Only the heat change. Um, and if the reaction occurs in a fixed volume container, then uh, we say that the energy is equal to the heat emitted in that fixed volume container because, again, even if, reactions is even if a reaction is trying to expand in a fixed volume container, it can expand, and so all that energy will be converted into heat. All right. So if we separate out our um, energy due to work, um, well, sorry, our energy due to heat, Q is our heat, minus our energy due to work this way, all right? So again, energy is transferred in the form of work or, sorry, heat or work. And here, energy, we can rewrite that heat as Q at uh, constant pressure. And we can rewrite, rewrite our work statement as we described previously in this other slide. Change in moles of gas times the gas constant times temperature. Therefore, we get this relationship where the change in all of our energy is equal to the change in the heat energy times the delta nRT. Okay? Now, usually, most of our energy is in the form of delta H. So, 
usually delta E and delta H are very close, unless there's a strong change in uh, work, trying to change in moles of gas, right? And an ex that's an example of something like an explosion, right? So where you have a lot of moles of gas being created. And that's what causes explosions, right? When the, the number of moles of gas that are created have no space, as they're formed, they need to push everything out of the way very rapidly, right? That's rapid form of gas as an explosion. All right, so we're getting a little bit of introduction here to um, uh, our a reminder of our heat, and now we're working a little bit more closely with our, our work and re recognizing how that relates to our total energy. Okay, good.